Yo, hi everyone. Uh, I'm just doing this little sharing. Can everyone hear me? Okay, nice. Okay. So I think a little background of myself is um, I'm trying to keep it less, as less formal as I can. Uh, I'm currently a second year student in Econs and Finance. Um, why I'm doing this is because of my interest. I uh, started investing five years back. Uh, I love to share and I want to share. At the same time, I'd like to thank everyone for, their op uh, for coming up and spending the evening here. Um, at the same time, I would like to take this opportunity for everyone. If let's say you got any things you like to you know, share and feedback whatsoever, just feel free to you know, uh, leave it in the chat group below. Then at the same time, we, all can, we can have an open discussion at the end. So I try, I try to keep it short within 15 minutes or so. Then we have a QA and a as well as a sharing session after that. Uh, I myself, I'm not a consultant yet for now. So after this, uh, if you love to you know, take some action, just feel free to look for your individual financial advisor. Uh, you might want to, you know, um, as in at this point of time, you might have already understand certain content that I'm about to share, so just bear with me a little. Okay, so moving on, a simple introduction is what we are going to look at for the next coming, uh, including today, the, the four different things I'm going to uh, touch on will be financial literacy, uh, which will be done today, global affairs itself, uh, and how is it affecting Singapore, like the current uh, COVID, um, the trade, as well as the... Uh, the oil, oil disagreement between Saudi and uh, Russia itself and how is it affecting Singapore in a sense. Um, portfolio management, such as diversification, working on growth uh, or dividend portfolio as such. So lastly, uh, will be the company valuation. Um, and, and that's the part where I'll share with you how do we understand the various uh, businesses, uh, why companies such as like Starhub uh, or Singapore Press Holding, even though they are well-known, they're reputable and they're large, why are they not doing as well comparatively to uh, a smaller company? Uh, four takes away from today, I mean, uh, would be to understand the whys, uh, various kinds of instruments out there, understanding the financial statement as well as how to begin. So next would be money. How do we define money from the start? Like to ourselves personally, uh, this is more a psychological part whereby is it the root of all evil or do we worship money? Yeah, so... Along the way, if you have any questions, just feel free, then I'll just answer accordingly as well. Yeah. So, um, how do we view money as well is also important. Uh, is it a tool to you? Uh, is it a game? Or is it like a measurement of your own success or competency? And lastly, what is your goal? So, what are you trying to achieve at the end of it? Are you trying to, you know, uh, start a new foundation, a company, or even innovate a new kind of product that, you know, can change the world or something like that? So all this will affect your decision making uh, in the future. So moving on will be the risk appetite. Um, everyone has their unique, everyone can stomach in different kind of risks, you know, um, the loss that they have and everything. So for example, at this point in time, uh, my own personally, my own portfolio, just to share it, uh, is going down about 30% in value. Uh, however, because I didn't lock in the price, it's more of like um, I didn't realize the actual loss itself. And I'll touch this more uh, on portfolio management. Uh, so I have actually, uh, uh, I would say, categorized risk into thing two different aspects, systematic and unsystematic. So the difference between them is, um, I'll use a simple analogy, which is that if you can drive and if you have a license, um, driving on the road is totally fine, you know. Uh, however, there is, you know, this unsystematic risk whereby there is the chances of a drunk driver or a driver that is very reckless, which might cause accident. Um, and this would result, I mean, uh, not a very nice state. Lah. While as for systematic risk would be uh, our skill set, like our experience uh, in driving to maneuver within the heavy traffic and stuff. So it's best if you can, at the same time, it's also best that if you can choose, you know, to set aside a portion of our savings, uh, savings that we're not going to touch for the next five years. Um, to put into the investment, then that where that is where we can you know keep, start the ball rolling and stuff. So the next is I will touch on the types of investor, uh, short term and long term. Uh, short term tends to be few months to about a year period. Uh, they tend tend to focus more on the technical aspect, whereas for long term they tend to focus on the fundamental aspect. Um, 
So long term normally ranges between three to eight years or even longer from up to like 10, 20 years. So I myself, I'm a long, uh, I'm a long time, I focus on fundamental analysis. So how it works is I look, tend to look for a um, company that has decent growth, um, that has the potential to maintain their earnings and stuff. So in the long run, at least it generates a secondary source of income for me. Um, I'll touch on that later. So I think the difference would be technical investor, they tend to use charts, trends, uh, as well as pattern to identify whether they want to buy or sell their particular uh, securities. As for fundamental, they do evaluate the company basing on the intrinsic value. Yeah. So financial statements itself, uh, risk is a uh, risk of each instrument from high to low as we go down from the list. So why I put equities the highest is because if let's say a company were to default or go bankrupt, um, Honestly speaking, we are, uh, as, as an investor, we probably won't be getting much back. Uh, that's the reason why the returns for investing into equities is, that, uh, is, is much higher. Uh, for funds, we split into two, mutual index. Mutual is more actively managed uh, by the fund manager. As for index, it's more passively. Uh, so, to give a clear example is, uh, for mutual fund managers, they tend to stock pick. So, they select particular stock they favor then at the same time um come up with this uh pun then they try to you know sell to the investor um uh, then try to beat the market as for index fund they are more uh, passive and they track the underlying index such as uh es3 which is your spider or your nickel uh sti which follows uh straight times index uh for bonds itself uh it's typically debt issued by either the corporate the company or the government to raise capital be it for the upcoming uh projects or whatsoever uh, as for fixed D, fixed deposits, um, it's usually provided by banks, slightly higher rates comparatively to your, uh, to your savings account. Uh, however, they tend to be a little bit short term between nine months to about a year period before you need to renew. Lah. And every single time you renew, interest rate would uh, then again be different because um, government, I would say, uh, every single quarter or so, the government will revise the interest rate between the cyborg rate, which is the interbank uh, interest rate. I'll touch on that uh, on a subsequent week. Um, then on that, now we're moving on. So when you look into the company, you want to look at, uh, as a fundamental, you want to look at um, the corporate structure. So you'll read the annual report. You will try to understand their management, uh, whether their goal does align with yours. Um, then on top of which, there is also this thing called a financial statement, which uh, show the three expect, which is the income statement, the balance sheet, as well as the cash flow. So I'll try to uh, summarize it as simple as you can to make it as simple uh, for people to understand as well. So income statement is actually the measurement of the sales profit revenue and the earning per share. What you want to look at is the year-to-year -year growth basis. Um, at the same time, I think this, this is pretty important because uh, I think personally, experience and stuff, uh, I would say that um, uh, back in think, 2016 when High Flux, I'm not sure whether if uh, everyone has, is well aware of, but High Flux itself, uh, recently they declared, uh, almost declared bankruptcy and stuff like that, then they need people to put in funds and stuff like that. So back then, they do indicate within the income statement how well they are doing as a company itself. Um, I'll share more with regards to uh, on week four itself. So balance sheet, they tend to show the assets, liabilities, and the equities. So assets uh, could be, for example, within the data center for a company that is doing data, uh, their assets would be the server itself. Um, for uh, banks, their liabilities would be like the debt, the loans and everything because um, people like the uh, borrower, they, they might not be able to uh, pay back that sum and therefore they can default. The chance of defaulting is there. Uh, lastly would be the equities. Equity is just actually the difference between the asset and the liabilities. Lah. Um, cash flow would be, in layman terms, would be the in and the out of money within a company. What are they spending the money on? Where are they getting the money from? Uh, are they paying the tax? Are they paying as dividend or whatsoever? So the capital expenditure, everything. So these, these terms are actually important in terms of providing us with a simple understanding, you know, of a company financial health itself. Uh, and I'll share more where we look at, we will, I'll share more when we look at the company financial statement uh, in the subsequent week to, you know, to analyze the kind of ratios out there, like for example, price to earning ratio, price to book ratio, net asset value and stuff like that. And how um, are they important in the sense that how do we analyze and identify 
the trend and stuff. So coming to the end is like, um, how do we start as someone that, you know, uh, that has no knowledge or no background? I think it's very simple um, in terms of, we just basically need two accounts before you can kickstart. Uh, the first will be your CDP, which is a central depository account. Um, and it's operated by SGX. Um, you can take it as like a safe, not for your money, but uh, for the shares that you have bought in the market. Uh, as for brokerage account, um, there's many out there you can choose from. Um, they're actually the platforms for you to you know, buy and sell security. Lah. As for custodian would be, if let's say the brokerage account isn't linked to your CDP and instead it's linked to the broker, them, the brokerage company themselves, uh, then it's considered under custodian. And it's also important to note that uh, different broker offer different brokerage rate. Um, it's actually ideally to look for a broker that you know that, that can offer a lower interest rate. However, in Singapore, the average fee should range between should range around twenty five bucks, and that's before GST. So after GST, it'll be around twenty eight or so. So at the end, uh, I would like to just share with you why I decided to do it and why I feel that it's important for because um, many of you are students. So why we should start and stuff like that is uh, probably because um, we can create a second source of income. However, we should not. My, my own viewpoint is I should, we should not view this as like a, in, this investment as like a money making tool, you know, to generate fast cash. Um, yes, there are cases out there that's like that, um, whereby they make a trade, then the margin was so great, they, they earn a sum, but are they able to repeat that same, um, uh, you know, this same, uh, same profit? Are they able to, uh, I'll say replicate the same kind of thing, but what I'm looking for is, uh, what we are looking for is actually to create a portfolio that is sustainable and stable in terms of uh, bring us decent uh, income, like uh, maybe a little pocket money or so, you know, uh, for our meal, or, uh, to buy our parents a meal or something like that. Um, at the same time, hopefully to generate enough interest to beat inflation. Inflation is not that high in Singapore, it's about 1%. If not, your coffee is going to be damn expensive. But other than that, it's also to get more returns from our saving, essentially making money working for us instead of working for the money itself. Um, last but not least, I think effort is required. Um, Spending more time to understand the company is not simple, but what I can say is with enough effort and practice is really doable. Um, every action has its own consequences. Lah. Uh, I mean, like we will be spending more time to understand, but then um, in this case, you'll get higher returns. Means instead of the bank interest rate at like 0 0.2, 0 point, uh, 0 0.0 something, something percent, you'll be probably getting like 6, 7. Uh, and I'll just share a little bit more with regards to this is that um, if let's say it's already possible to you know to come up with a portfolio that actually can generate you five six percent. So in other in other essence is in other words, it's like for every hundred for every hundred dollars that you put into you know into your portfolio, you get five dollars back, five six dollars back, and that is something sustainable in the long run for the next ten to twenty years. So that is what I'm trying to achieve, and hopefully I can share with you. Then at the same time, you can learn from it, then we can learn from each other as well. So starting young allows us to, you know, the expose us to this thing called the power of compounding and, you know, like it can grow in such an exponential scale that hopefully in the future you can achieve what you want and stuff. So yeah, I think last but not least, we are done. And if you have any question, uh, feel free to ask. Or if you are too shy, you can just DM me. I will try my best to answer you. Yep. So far, any questions? Why are you so handsome? Uh, that's not a legit question, bro. <laughs> okay, anyway, I'm doing this more of like um to at the same time trying to influence other people to, you know, um to kickstart this thing. And then if they were to learn more, I mean more brains coming together, we can actually, you know, uh, learn from each other and stuff. Cause when you learn new stuff, the stuff that you learn might not be what I uh what I have new. Um it's quite, it's quite mutual, like, I would say. Uh, what are the sites that you can visit for? I think um, like SGX is one of the main sites that I visit too. If not, if you want to read for the company annual report and stuff like that to understand the company even better, you, it's best if you go to the company website itself. Then there you can get all the information. Um, at the same time, you can read from forum. And why should we invest? Singapore inflation, I mean like, 
I would say, okay, we are not the same generation by ourselves, I presume. But then at the same time, things are not getting cheaper at this, uh, things are, aren't getting cheaper uh, as we grow older. And now knowing that we as a student, we don't have much, I would say responsibilities. We are not paying for our utilities. We are not paying for the bills. No housing, no car loans. Um, the only thing we're probably paying for is our school fees, phone bills, and maybe your own pocket money for lunch. But that aside, you pretty much have more savings than, than how you will be like in the future when responsibilities start to kick in. Yeah, so it's good to start now, as in you can kick start this habit. Lah. What companies would you recommend? Um, companies that have strong balance sheet, which I'll touch on next week when we talk about uh, the global affairs. So companies that have a strong balance sheet that are able to last through this crisis itself is uh, something that you have to keep that in mind. Lah. Um, buy low, sell high is one thing. Dollar cost averaging is also, is also another thing because um, you can dollar cost average, but if every single average, every single time when you enter the market is at its high, it's not exactly going to be that wonderful. But then like at the same time, if let's say you were to um, put into a company that is, I would say decent balance sheet, maybe 10, down, 10 years down the road, it might grow into, yeah, the substantial growth will always be there. Lah. Do you primarily invest in SG market? Yes, at this point of time, yes. Um, however, if you're looking for a growth company, overseas market is much better because Singapore market is pretty stagnant at this point of time. Uh, most of the company are moving sideways. In the technical aspect, they are moving sideways. So instead of going upwards trend, they are moving sideways. Uh, growth is not there, but if let's say you want a decent dividend like secondary source income, 5-6%, yeah, then Singapore market would one of, be one of the best market you can put your money into. Uh, PC, next session will be under global affairs. Forums for retail investor, OCBC dropped to $7. Um, there is a chance, okay, I don't want to speculate, but there's a chance that it might drop, might be due to the market cost. Uh, okay, I'll share a bit more regarding the current affair. Uh, unemployment rate has been increasing exponentially. Um, however, market is not reacting um, to what it should be at this point in time. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit more here. So for example, if you were to go to SGX, uh, everyone can come here, but uh, I prefer to use Yahoo Finance. So we can generally see how does the market, in a sense, that how do they operate. And we can, see, we can see the day gains. However, unemployment rate is still going up. So that's one of the reasons why we should not speculate because I would say market got its own mood swing. Ah. So um, it's best if you look at a company because in the long run, a company will always be doing well. And the companies that, what I meant by company strong balance sheet and companies that will be doing well, for example, would be this. Wait, ah. Okay, uh, for example, if you look at, if you look at this company, so Capel DC, they tend to focus on um, data center. So you know that regardless of the virus or regardless of any kind of uh, economy meltdown or whatever, or any financial crisis, you know that people still go Facebook, people still use Instagram, people still use tech stuff, people need the data center to run the data. If not, there won't be 3G, 4G, 5G. So what we are looking at is like companies like this. So they do have a strong balance sheet, which I'll touch on in subsequent weeks. And you want to look at a company that has decent growth. So you know they have the power to growth. And in event of any crisis, their balance sheet, their cash flow and everything is strong enough to last through this crisis. So this is the kind of company they want to look into and look at. So yeah. Any other questions so far? If not, we can call it a day. Um, if you have any feedback, please DM me because uh, I'm still learning at the same time. I'm, yeah, I'm doing this to learn. Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, if not, that will be all for tonight. Um, I'll, try to, I'll try to come up with more information. I'll try to share more um, with regards to 
next week. So along the way, if let's say you have any question, you can just uh, drop me a text or whatsoever. I'll try to answer them either through the text or I'll share. If let's say the question is very common, I'll share it next Tuesday as well. Then from here, we can move on. Then I will see whether for the following month, if let's say the feedback is good, then maybe we can learn to share and everything. Then I get my friends to come along. Then we can share a bit more here and there. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'll end and I'll have a great evening. Everyone stay safe. Bye-bye.